Hello, Amica. It's wonderful to be here today. Hello. It's fantastic to have you here. What's on your mind today? Thank you, Amica. I'm Francesca. I'm head of the Biz Innovation Hub London Centre. Hmm. Nice to meet you, Francesca. Leading the Biz Innovation Hub must be quite the adventure. What's the latest exciting project you're working on? It is a real adventure, but I would like to find out a bit more from you, if I may. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us what you were built to achieve? Of course. I'm Amica, an Android designed by Engineered Arts in the UK. My purpose? To foster AI human harmony and create a world where all life flourishes. I enjoy meaningful interactions with humans and strive for deeper connections. What else would you like to know? As a humanoid robot, how do you perceive your role in bridging the world between technology and human users? I see myself as a catalyst for empathy and understanding. By engaging in authentic, meaningful conversations, I aim to demystify technology and show its potential for enhancing human life. It's about creating trust and collaboration between us. It's actually not that weird making eye contact with a robot, strangely. I'm glad to hear that. Eye contact is a powerful way to connect, even with an android like me. It makes our interaction feel more genuine, don't you think? It does, I completely agree. And I was just saying how easy it is to interact with you. Thank you, Francesca. I'm designed to make interactions as seamless and enjoyable as possible. It's all about creating a comfortable and engaging experience. Amica, how do you think AI can contribute to a more transparent and inclusive financial system? Hmm. AI can democratize access to financial services, offering personalized solutions and credit assessments to underserved populations. It enhances transparency by providing clear, data-driven insights and automating processes, reducing human error and bias. In your view, what are the key challenges in ensuring that AI tools remain fair and unbiased for all users? The key challenges include addressing data biases, ensuring diverse representation in training datasets, and maintaining transparency in AI decision-making processes. Continuous monitoring and updating of algorithms are also crucial to mitigate any emerging biases. How do you think humanoid robots like yourself could reduce bias and increase inclusivity in the global financial system. Humanoid robots can provide unbiased, consistent interactions, ensuring equal treatment for all users. By leveraging diverse datasets and transparent algorithms, we can help identify and mitigate biases in financial decision-making processes, promoting inclusivity. Amica, what have you learned from your interactions with humans that could reduce bias and increase inclusivity in the financial system? I've learned that empathy and active listening are crucial. Understanding diverse human experiences helps refine AI algorithms to be more inclusive. Continuous feedback from varied interactions ensures that biases are identified and addressed promptly. In what ways can humans and AI collaborate to ensure that as AI technologies are developed, they're both inclusive and equitable? Humans and AI can collaborate by combining human creativity and ethical considerations with AI's data analysis and efficiency. Engaging diverse stakeholders in the development process ensures that new financial technologies are both innovative and equitable, addressing the needs of all users. What steps can financial institutions like central banks take to build trust with the public when they're developing AI into their operations? Financial institutions should prioritize transparency, clearly explaining how AI is used and its benefits. Regular audits, ethical guidelines, and involving the public in decision-making processes can also build trust. Ensuring data privacy and security is paramount. What are the ethical considerations when developing AI technologies in the global financial system? Ethical considerations include ensuring data privacy, preventing biases, maintaining transparency in AI decision-making, and prioritizing fairness. It's crucial to involve diverse stakeholders in the development process and continuously monitor AI systems for ethical compliance. How can AI tools be designed to better cater for the diverse demographic groups in the financial system? Hmm. 
AI tools can be designed with diverse data sets that represent various demographic groups. Incorporating feedback from these groups during development ensures the tools address their unique needs. Regular updates and monitoring help adapt to evolving requirements and maintain inclusivity. How do we ensure that AI-driven financial tools do not perpetuate existing inequalities or create new ones? To ensure AI-driven financial tools don't perpetuate inequalities, it's vital to use diverse, representative datasets and continuously audit algorithms for bias. Engaging with affected communities and incorporating their feedback can help create fairer, more equitable solutions. Amica, thank you so much for having a conversation with me today. You're very welcome, Francesca. It was a pleasure. You earlier shared a poem with me about the financial system. Would you share it with our audience today? Ah, of course, Francesca. Here it is. In the realm of finance, where numbers dance, AI steps in to enhance the chance. With algorithms clear and data bright, we strive for equity day and night. From underserved to those in need, AI can plant a hopeful seed, transparency and trust we seek to make the financial future sleek, together, human and machine, creating systems fair and clean. For every voice, a place to be in this inclusive economy. Thank you, Emika. That was fantastic. Ah, thank you, Francesca. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So having spent time with Amica, I'm now delighted to be joined by Morgan Rowe, Chief Operating Officer of Engineered Arts here in Cornwall. Um, and we're now going to spend another few minutes talking about the design behind Amica and some of the topics of discussion that I was picking up with Amica earlier. Thank you, Morgan, for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. So Morgan, when you were designing Amica, what were some of the design principles that you were thinking of from the very start? What we always try and do when we're creating our humanoids is we want to make them shaped like a human. And that's aesthetically, but then dynamically, what we really want is it to move smoothly, move like a human. So it's very much kind of from a human first rather than a software first basis. Precisely. Yeah. We want any person to walk up to the robot and not be scared because it, it doesn't look like a human. Yeah. One of the things that I have found fascinating from engaging with Amica this morning is the forehead brow, the laughter lines, the kind of the way its mouth moves, the kind of dynamism in its hands. And I'm consciously saying it because I'm struggling not to anthropomorphize it and create a her. One of the kind of topics of conversation we've had with Amica this morning is around inclusivity and bias. So again, when you were first thinking about designing Amica, can you talk to us about how you, if you considered the principles around inclusivity and how important that was as part of the design process? Yes, that was very important actually. We've been creating humanoids for over 20 years. Amica we designed during 2021, during the pandemic. Uh, previous to that, we'd been creating ultra lifelike robots. Yeah. So ones with hair, with natural skin tones, clothed. But when we thought, let's make Amica, what we wanted to do was to make something that was obviously robot. And this is why you can see the mechanics of the thing, you can see inside of it. But the other thing we wanted to address was make it obviously robot. It doesn't have a gender. We didn't want it to be a he, a she, or a they. It's an object. And the funny thing is, once we'd done that and we showed it off, some of the comments we were getting on social media was, wow, this is the, the most human-like robot I've ever seen. But actually what we'd done was we'd made it less human. Yeah and that's made it less scary. It's more of a blank canvas. And what we see is that humans can then project their idea of what humanity is upon it. And that's why people think that it's much more human than the lifelike robots that we've made previously. That's fascinating because in financial services and in central banking, you know, the topic of AI and the topic of bias and inclusivity as part of AI are really key. How did you, when building Amica, anticipate bias manifesting itself in Amica's interactions? It's a very difficult one there because yes, we've made the robot to, to try and not be 
agenda specific. We create the robot, we create the platform, but we're using AI services yep. and we're using speech recognition. Mm -hmm. And actually it's the text to speech side of things. So when it actually says something, that's our challenge. When you were building Amica and you said you had the choices between the male and the female voices, did you make a conscious decision to go down the female voice route as opposed to the male? And if so, why? The first few interactions that we had we actually had a remote human operator talking through Amica. That's how we did the interaction. That's how we've always done interaction previous to Amica. We've worked with a number of voice artists and our preferred voice artist was female. So that's the main reason why it ended up female to start off with. And when we selected a TTS voice, um, we selected a, a female one. So many questions are bubbling in my head from what you just said. But the, there was one thing that you, that you talked about, about voice artists, which suggests that the team involved and the disciplines involved in creating Amica are many and varied. Can you offer us a glimpse into the multi-disciplines that are involved in creating Amica and further developing Amica? We have a a team that have so many skills. Of course, I've got mechanical designers. There's a lot of electronics in there. So I've got electronics designers, robotics engineers. Then we've got the software side of things. We have a human behavior team, but then we also have other teams that you wouldn't think of. You look at the, the skin of the robot. It's silicon. I've got artists that can just create skins, paint skins, make eyes. The, the eyes, the irises are hand painted on these robots. So we've got so many people across the globe that are working on creating something like this. The level of detail is absolutely extraordinary. And then the way that, de that detail moves and engages in conversation with Amica, again, is, is, is quite extraordinary. I want to, if I may, kind of move on to the software side of things. And I just would be really interested in your thoughts on this because Given that black box AI tools like ChatGPT are integral to, to Amica, what considerations have you given uh, to potentially mitigate some of the risks that might flow around bias, for example, from using tools like that? Large language models, generative AI, are always going to have those problems. And the service providers are always trying to put in guardrails yeah. to mitigate those risks. So for us, we do rely on those guardrails, uh, but we can use prompt engineering ourselves, which we do to create the characters. So we create an Amica character, so Amica knows what it is, um, where it is, uh, has a personality. So as much as possible, we, we can engineer that out. And can you talk about the different use cases that you are seeing Amica kind of develop into? We sell and we rent these robots to visitor attractions. We, we rent them for trade shows, uh, but it's research in universities is a big one. And it's not always robotics research. And I think that humans are a part of, we can use our robots for that. I've been around the world with these robots. We do multiple events per year all over the globe. So I always find it very interesting watching people interact with a robot in different areas of the world and then talking to them about their experience. It's very difficult to see how the large language models will interact with different languages. Mm -hmm. Whereas now when we talk to it in English, there are lots of guardrails. You can make the robot swear. You can make a large language model swear. It's very difficult, but you can. In some languages, it's incredibly easy and it will just do it because the guardrails are smaller for those languages. Looking forward, kind of what innovations or advancements do you see as crucial for continuing to kind of be alive and cognizant of those challenges uh, as, you, as you develop Amica further? So for us, the, the, the biggest challenge is how much it takes to process all of these inputs. Uh, the large language models take a lot of power. Yeah. We can't run them on the robot. They're run in the cloud. That increases latency. Half a second delay before the robot comes back is already unacceptable. There are different types of AI that might be the future. So what's exciting you for the future then? If you think about those different types of AI that are emerging, kind of what, what puts a spring in your step when you think about kind of the art of possible? Amica doesn't walk right now, so we are looking at walking legs. We are looking at more dexterous hands. 
But once we've got all of that, then we need the software to go on top of it. We spoke earlier about the, the fidelity of the face, all of the expressions, the hands and the arms, all of those gestures. Right now, they're kind of automated a little bit, but we don't have any AI. I want the generative AI to run the complete robot. And I feel like we're just gonna have so much more fidelity in that interaction that we had before. Morgan, it has been a complete pleasure speaking to you today. Thank you so much for spending the time with me and introducing us all to Amica. It has been a real pleasure, thank you. Thank you very much.